so good morning guys I am sitting down with my coffee and um, I have I'm going to make a color chart um, from a collection of paint that I have um, a little while back I um, um, I sorted my um, granulating paints because I wanted to make um, a paint box full of granulating paints because I used them a lot and um, I quite like um, having them all together um, and these are all the ones that I have um, outside set so these are all the granulating paints I have in tubes and one or two sticks by Daniel Smith I think and you see there is um, quite a bit of difference in the granulation. The most obvious one is the Luna Black by Daniel Smith, of course. Um, but um, here you can see a Sennelier color is absolutely not granulating. And um, even though on the website it says it does, and that one is a little, well, and you know, it may be the paper. You may sometimes, um, when you have paint from tubes and there is a lot of binder in the little paint, bit of paint that you've got, then it doesn't granulate as much. Um, so that may also be, um, you know, one of the issues. Um, however, um, there is one thing that became really, really clear when I made this set. And that is that as in the, um, there are hardly any, there, the granulating white's tight and buff. Um, there are also very cheap clay ones um, that do granulate, by the way, white ones. Um, then there is a Sennelier Naples, yellow. It does granulate somewhat. But then Daniel Smith, Quinacridone Gold, says to granulate. And I'm really sorry. I would love that it granulated, but I don't, I really don't see granulation here. Um, I also don't see it for the Quinacridone, Quinacridone. Sienna perhaps probably um, I just don't see it I mean um, so and since when do quinacridones granulate but however um, they say on their color chart that it does um, so I might you know give it a try um, again on a different kind of paper or you know whatever um, but I don't think it granulates does it granulate for any of you um, and then I have some, well, effect paints here that, well, like um, the Cascade Green and there is uh, Rose of Ultramarine and Moon Glow and Shadow Violet that, ah, do they granulate um, a little or but it's more about the effect. So I'm keeping those in this box as well. And... Um, well, well, as you can see, there is hardly any yellow. There is no real red, only Daler and Rowney, they made a vermilion um, that granulates and um, it's actually kind of lovely. They carry the colour no longer, so apparently, you know, um, the pigment may have run out, um, it may have been a very fugitive pigment, maybe the colours walked away from the paper the moment your paint was dry. Um, there are all kinds of reasons why certain pigments are no longer being used. Although I am curious what this pigment is. I looked it up on the Dale and Rowney site, but Dale and Rowney um, doesn't give pigment information, which is such a shame because I bought quite an old set of Daniel Sm uh, of Dale and Rowney, um, uh, I think last year or the year before, um, from you know a very old store which. Oh, they were the, the store was closing, and obviously they had found this little uh, bit of Dale Rowney somewhere from years ago. So I bought that for a really cheap price, not expecting too much. But I really like the paint. Some of the paint's consistencies were not really okay anymore, but you know, ninety nine percent was okay. Among which was that one. But I only have one of those tubes, and it's such a shame because I would love to have more of that color. So there is a lot of purples. And most are based on one or two pigments, uh, PV16 and 14. Um, then there is a lot of blues uh, based on, on cobalt. The, there is the, the cobalt, the mangne uh, manganese and the ultramarine, marine, ultramarine. 
although I am wondering if I actually chose an ultramarine for in this well I don't think I did actually that's stupid well um this is not my final set and I will show you in a minute because I am asking for some input from you for this um, little project that I'm doing. So there is a lot of green and earth tones and blacks which is which can be expected because they are you know the um, uh, typical um, um, pigments to granulate because they're a bit more coarse and um, but I love granulation so what I am waiting to see happening and um, is granulating paints, the reds, yellows, and I have granulation medium, but it doesn't do the same. I mean, it looks a bit that way, but it's not exactly the same. So I am curious. What I was um, surprised to find is that the Daniel Smith Opera Pink was um, granulating as well, um, which is kind of fun. I'm not... Um, I'm not, I don't have that one in this set. I like the color, um, but there are two problems with it when you're an artist. Where this is fine for art journaling. This is a really awesome color when you're just drawing for yourself or um, in, in, in a journal, bullet journal, whatever. Um, but one, it can, cannot be reproduced. So if, if you, no matter what scanner or professional printing service you go to, this opera pink cannot be reproduced. There is no scanner in the world, I think. No, none that I've seen. And I have put this color under very super high-tech professional scanners um, in companies, no, not, not my own. And it just didn't pick it up. It translates it into something else. And one scanner even, um, it, it made it gray. It was sort of like, I don't understand the color, so I'll just draw out the color and leave the, 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 the leave the tone so that's one so if you're an artist and you're looking to reproduce you can't use it um, the second uh, problem with this color is that it will fade pretty quickly um, it's a very fugitive pigment can you say that a fugitive pigment well anyway so if you use it in art and you sell the art your buyer will have a piece of very bright and sparkly art on the wall and um, depending on where it is placed on the wall, how much sunlight comes in, um, the colour will wear off, um, well, within your lifetime. But no, the, the colours like these, the neons, they go really, really fast. Even when you don't put them in the light, even when you just use them in your art journal. You close the art journal, you leave it in, <laughs> in a dark uh, chest somewhere, it will still go. So this is not in my set. The ones that are in my set, and I am looking to expand, <laughs> I know I'm horrible, but I um, have, now have, oops, here's my, um, this is a De La Rowney Cobalt Green that came out. So this is um, a little um, uh, tin that I bought um, from AliExpress in China. And it was good, it was very affordable. And um, what the reason I don't have a traditional tin is that I needed smaller tins. I have quite a bit of sets, and to fit it all into, I have this designated area, and I don't want to overflow anymore. So um, I wanted smaller tins. So they have these smaller tins, and that come with um, uh, half pans with magnets. So fantastic. Um, so what I did is I made this tin, but there are eight spaces left. And what I want to do is I want to fill up those eight spaces with um, granulating paints. Um, none of my own, because I already chose the best. But what I would like to hear from you is whether perhaps you um, have any colours that are really nice pigmented and... Um, that are um, that are granulating beautifully. Um, I do have my uh, I do have my um, arrows aimed at some Daniel Smith uh, Primatex, uh, like the Tiger's Eye, which I would like, and which was it the Blue Appetite, or well, there are a couple of colours that I've seen that I really really like. But what I would like to know from you is which colours you think 
are missing because you know maybe you're watching this and you say oh no this color is pretty much the same because here I have a, a Schminky Horadam Cobalt Violet Hue which is a PV62 so a violet pigment and it is actually Appetite and if I'm correct Daniel Smith has got Appetite in their collection so they may be the same I don't know but it's something I'm um, you know and maybe there are paints out there that I've just not considered yet that you think Mandy you should go and find them out because they're really worth it so I've got eight places left and I'm really curious what paints you will recommend so before I start I'm going to spray some water on these pans um, what's really obvious is that the Sennelier paints they are very very fluid and honey like mm. just taking a sip of my coffee because I'm a bit thirsty well I love the Daniel Smith Titan buff because it combines wonderfully with all kinds of colors and then it turns into a um, it turns into a pretty neat powdery um, pastels and I I also use it a lot in skin tones to to tone down the, um, the skin tones I hope you can see this by the way I'm gonna check my camera oh yeah good <laughs> I'm filming with my phone so I used to um, I used to be able to see on a little screen on my on my camera um, whether everything was all right and on your phone you can't see you just have to rely on your camera to pick up on whatever it is you're filming this is um, Sennelier Naples Yellow Deep. And here's a De La Rowney Vermilion, which I really like. Would it be a I'm wondering if this perhaps is a PR 101 because um, that also comes in many many um, forms I believe if I'm correct now there's the Sennelier cadmium red purple It's a PR108. And Daniel Smith Rose of Ultramarine Marine, sorry. And you know that's um, I like how the pigments split up and then um, you can see this is one of those um, paints where I wonder you know in the old days they would probably not have been used because they would have they might have been considered not fit for sale because the pigment split and now everyone is going berserk over them it's funny how how things change and how we have come to love the odd and the queer and I think that's because there is just so much available to us now that everything seems normal if you read about pigments and the history of pigments then you do get a renewed appreciation for all these pigments and the fact that you that you can acquire them you know whenever you like basically 
I mean, we don't have a good art store here, unfortunately. Um, but they already sell more than anyone in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance could have, or well, even for the industrial age, could have, could have possibly um, purchased. So it's all very relative. The this is a Rembrandt cobalt violet, and that really granulates for a, ferociously. I love it when they do that. Now this is a sommelier blue violet. Oops. I'm trying to stay within the lines. They look nice when they are mixed, but it's, I try to avoid that and keep my color chart. This is not, this is a very soft um, pigment, as you can see. If I hope anything for the future of um, watercolour paints and, you know, maybe chemists will say I'm mad, I don't know what I'm talking about. But what I would love to see happening is um, the development of pigments that are a bit crazy, even more crazy than this. I mean, especially in the red yellow and uh, pink area I don't know if that's possible and probably um, companies are already doing that I mean if you look at the enormity of the um, paints carried by companies like Daniel Smith or Old Holland by the way that's a shadow violet it's um, I believe every woman <laughs> that paints that I know swoons over that color and it's kind of funny because some men that I've seen do reviews on YouTube are like oh well yeah it's just two pigments mixed together <laughs> hmm I think that this kind of granulation is the alternative to bling like when you don't want um so now we're going to do uh schminky horror dam cobalt violet which is beautiful really really beautiful this is the appetite um pigment i was talking about and this is like a super royal pigment I'm adding a bit of water. I can't remember what I was talking about before. <laughs> oh, that's what happens with working on the fly. I'm not really working, you know. This is this is my coffee break. I don't have to be sharp. <laughs> Daniel Smith Lavender. That was one of the new colours that came out not too long ago. And you know what? I make. I need to make a confession here. I've never ever used it yet. Ridiculous, isn't it? Because this is. It. I will show you. It looks very much like. Um, I think it's called King's Blue by Old Holland. Only this one is more beautiful. Although that being said, it does consist of three different um, pigments. And it's going to get even worse because I actually have a pigment by Old Holland, a paint that consists of four pigments. And if you're painting a monochrome, that's no problem. But if you are mixing, um, there are some I know there are some watercolorists that are really, really um, 
against the use of multi-pigments. Multi The sommelier paints are all, in comparison to the others, a bit um, gooey to work with. This is Daniel Smith Manganese Blue Hue. This is, I think, sort of an alien blue colour. It's like David Bowie's blue, blue, electric blue. <laughs> Sound and vision. Blue, blue. I will sit right down, waiting for the gift of sound and vision. Well, here you've got vision and blue and colour. Now, moving on to Old Holland, Manganese Blue Deep. There was a time when I needed to have all the Old Holland um, paint. I, I was obsessed and then I had them and never used them. Why? I don't know. I think at a certain point in time my preferred style went from illustration to painting and but look just 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 take a look at how marvelously this old Holland manganese blue deep granulates. I mean, seriously, that is ooh, amazing, beautiful. So that's why it's in here. It's gorgeous. Now a PG fifty, and you know what? Um, I ch I chose Sennelier PG fifty, but it doesn't matter what brand you use this from. At least I tried them all. And um, this is Cobalt Teal, Cobalt Turquoise. Uh, this is called Turquoise Green by Sennelier. But really, they're all very much the same. They're, there's this little difference, at least in the ones that I have. But they granulate nicely. Only in, in mixes, they do sometimes become a little bit muddy. But then again, I mix everything. Okay, so De La Rowney Cobalt Green. Oh, that's um, a little pathetic, like um, dried up worm. And <laughs> this is one of the tubes I was talking about that was not really in its best condition anymore. Ah. The granulation was lovely. <laughs> You're... You'll have to believe me. You'll have to believe my work. No, it's it's going to come. But I, I chose a brush that's a bit sturdy, that can take a little bit of rough handling. And um, I really like the granulation in this paint. There's a little bit of foam on it because I'm I'm rubbing so hard, you see. It's got nothing to do with the paint. Now that it's dried up, it's just become a little bit hard to um to pick it back up. Now the serpentine, I really like serpentine. Um I got it from Gina or Caroline. I don't remember, but it's so, so lovely. And it's not a coarse granulation that you get. It's sort of a fine granulation, but like when you want to paint a mossy forest floor or something, you know, then this is just, it looks as soft as a golden mossy floor when you're, when you're in, the, um, in the forest and you want to just walk barefoot. That's how soft it looks. I love it. So moving on to Sennelier Sap Green.
and I'm using a lot of water as you can see and for those that don't know granulation needs water to happen if you lay it down very evenly with little water you will not see much granulation which is why I am um, sometimes dropping a little bit of water here and there to help to help make a structure become uh, to help make a texture become uh, visible hooker's green ooh this is also sennelier it hadn't the paint hasn't really dried up it's been in this um, tin for 14 days now and it still hasn't dried up um, Sennelier also ha also have pans, by the way. And um, I remember the first time I tried them, <laughs> I didn't like them. But that was only because I hadn't found a good use for them yet. Because they are, I like them now very, very much because they are so vibrant and they glaze beautifully. Then there is another really... There's a Sennelier Chrome Oxide Green. And Chrome Oxide Green is rather a dirty colour. It's it's like if you have if you suffer from the winter blues, don't buy this colour because it it won't make your situation any better. It's it's rather depressing in a way. It's flat, it's dull, it's cold it's a cold color and yet i i never use it although i have to say that i wanted to give it a try and see if i can make something of it and it does granulate lovely all right this is another daniel smith you know daniel smith has done what i just said i wished was going to happen for the future that they were going to invent all kinds of really weird pigments. You know, Daniel Smith was ahead of me. Um, and they did. And the lovely thing of this Cascade Green is it just like the um, uh, Rose of Ultramarine, Marine, Rose of Ultramarine, the Shadow Violet Moon Glow, you know, it consists of two pigments and they split up. They're like, sorry, honey. We've been to a marriage counsellor. I've talked to your mum. And I know we've got kids. But I'm not staying. I do not want to be part of you. Sort of a sad colour. In that <laughs> when you look at that. Look at it that way. Um, this, by the way, is another um, colour that's a little bit dull. It's the Core Cobalt Green. and But I like it very very much and um, the reason is that it mixes lovely for all kinds of colors to tone down I'll show you another time but um, look at the granulation I mean this is this really oh I can show you a painting if you have a second um, hold on This is a painting I did, um, it's a monochromatic painting, and I used only the um, core cobalt green to paint this. So it's lovely, lovely. If you love um, granulating paints, you know, I'm not paid to, I'm not paid to make, to, to advertise paint, you know that? Um, I only say what I, I only say what I mean. And what I what I think, you know, it's only my opinion. If you have another, you're more than welcome to. In fact, I really love it when you have another opinion. Because when I hear things from other people, um, I can start thinking and say, oh, you know, they might be right. Or I might learn something new. Or I might find a really new favourite paint. Or I... This is the Daniel Smith Monte Amiata Natural Sienna. I said Primatech here. Is that true? 
This is odd. The core. Oh, I think I know. This is core cobalt green, and the Daniel Smith is looking to be away from core <laughs> as fast as possible. The arch enemies, I think. <laughs> no, but look, really. There is a repellent. There is a Daniel Smith. No, not anymore. There seems to be a Daniel Smith repellent in the core paints. Maybe that's a secret of their paints. <laughs> oh God. This is why I wouldn't I don't think it would be a very good idea for me to do paid advertising. I don't think I would have the diplomacy to say the things that producers like. Or maybe they do. Right, so burnt umber. Here we go. This is a pretty straightforward colour, right? Uh, this is the Sennelier burnt umber. And um, well, this is like a very good landscape. A very good landscape pigment. Or skin tones or whatever. But it granulates nicely. Then it's Daniel Smith. How do you say this? Go tight. Go tight. Go it tight. Or go it height. Well, those who know the pigment will probably know. kind of funny if you want to teach me how to pronounce this correctly you will have to do a little video <laughs> or you will have to know how to write phonetically do you I do I can but I'm not telling you how to do that I'd rather see you do video okay raw umber this is a color I use so much you wouldn't I don't think that it would show in my colourful work, but I think raw umber is in pretty much, well, maybe all, no, not all my paintings, many, oh no, oops. The Daniel Smith is driving away the, the Sennelier. Daniel Smith is not really good friends with any of the other brands, are they? <laughs> Right, now we're going to a pigment I never, ever, ever use. Seriously, <laughs> I just don't. I hate it. And it didn't make it any better when I learned what the origin of this is. This is Caput Mortem PR101. Oh no! Shouldn't blab so much and watch my swatch. Well, anyway, watch the swatch. It's going to be my new motto. Watch the swatch. Um... But actually, right now it's 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 made in a less bizarre and macabre way. But this pigment was actually made from mummies. Caput mortum. Mortum means dead. Caput means very broken. Caput. So the dead that are broken. <clears throat> or something like that. <coughs> right. There is a curse on this paint. It makes you choke. Did you hear that? Right. D.S. Van Dyke Brown. Look, I only... Oh, no. That's another. D.S. Van Dyke Brown. No, I was going to try and be really, really dramatic about this colour. And then I make the mistake of being dramatic too quickly. Oh, boy. Now I blew it. Now I blew it. D.S. Daniel Smith Van Dyke Brown. I was actually a little bit surprised that it granulated. I think, oh no! Look at that! The dead are invading my paint now. Oh. It always happens. I really try to work neat and then there is that one little drop of water that was here and that connected the one rectangle to the other. 
Some people think my work is the best in the world. It's quite frustrating, as you can see. Right, so now, um, will you indulge me so I can do, I can be a little dramatic. Look at this, the old hall and paints grey. This is the last drop that I had, and I will dearly miss it, because... Seriously, I love it. I love, love, love it. I know it's only a mix of PB29 and P black, PBK9, and I am bound to have both pigments somewhere, but I will still really miss this small tube with this lovely granulating colour. It looks like indigo. It's bluish. There is uh, quite a bit of PBK, PB29 in it, I presume, and it's just it's downright gorgeous. And the reason why it's almost empty is because this is one of the old Holland paints that I did use. Right, now moving on to one of my very, very favourite granulating colours. I had a stick that Caroline brought for me from America. Thank you, Caroline. They say sometimes, they said, people said, people I know once said to me that the internet was an antisocial place. I even met a fan from America. She came to visit me here. Yes, she did. So people were all creeped out, like, Mandy, you don't go meet strangers. I don't normally meet strangers, so don't get your hopes up too high. But Caroline and I, we met, and um, she's my sister from another mother. It was really, really weird. When we met, we sort of didn't have to say anything. Do you know that? Do you recognise that? So really, we haven't met since. I mean, she's on the other end of the world and there was no chance that I was traveling that way and um, they were not traveling this way, but still. I do think of my sister from another mother a lot when I work with the Daniel Smith paint. And of Gina, Gina sent me, I remember, as, I think it's about two, two and a half years ago, Gina sent me a huge set of Daniel Smith paints to try. So, so generous. I hardly knew where to look. And, you know, I'm still painting with that set. It's just so, so lovely. Look, the Luna Black. Guys, do you think, when you look at this, do I need the Luna Blue and the Luna Violet? Because those are the ones I'm really, really curious about. Because I love, love the Luna Black. I sort of really, really love it, you know. I am suspecting that Blue Appetite looks a bit like the old Holland paint grey. I'm not sure. What do you think? I like this, this, this set. But what I would like is to expand this set of granulating colours with eight more. But those eight colours will have to really add something to the game. Obviously, I need an ultramarine. I don't, I really have no idea why I don't have it in here. I should be having it in here, I think. Ultramarine granulates, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? What is it? PB29? 28? Why the hell doesn't it, is it not in here? This is Cobalt Blue by Sennelier. It looks like an ultramarine. But anyway, so I certainly need an, a granulating ultramarine in it. Or am I mistaken? I'm not right. Right, anyway, um, oh, my coffee went cold. So that's going to be in here. And I want it to be an ultramarine that is, um, that tends towards the, the violet a little bit, I think. Um, or not. Um, I don't think I'm going to need any more greens. I have a lot of greens and I'm I'm happy with this composition although I would love to have a good replacement for the Dale Rowney cobalt green because this paint sort of almost died this is in, in, in a coma it's like 
it's very hard to revive. So I need a paint that really wants to live and wants to sparkle a bit more. And this just, well, this is an old one. We have to take really good care of it. And oh, I'll have to put it into the elderly homes of my paint. Um, I'm good with the earth tones as well, I think, unless you have... A, I will always be open to anything, really. Um, I would love reds. Please, does anybody know of a red granulating paint? And um, I don't want you to say my color chart of this and that brand says it granulates because my color charts actually said about some paints like this one that it granulated but as you can see it didn't but if you have a very good um, suggestion for me I'm really curious about the tiger's eye I believe and there are a couple more Primatex that I think I will love very very much blue appetite is one of them because I think I am missing a dark blue and I Gina um, gave me blue appetite in the set that she sent me only I ran out it's gone so um, but I'm looking to buy eight more and I think that one's going to be in it um, but if you do have any other suggestions, I am so, so open to them. And, um, well, I want to thank you for looking and thank you in advance. And if you like this video, there will be more where this came from. And um, please sign up for my YouTube account. And um, if you have any questions about watercolour paint, about watercolour paint combined with mixed media, um, or if you have any suggestions for videos, I'm not giving any guarantees here, but, you know, it's good for me to make a list of suggestions so that if I feel like making a video but don't really have inspiration or don't have a new set of watercolours lying about, it's always good for me to be able to look at my set of um, questions and uh, answer one, pick one and, and go with it. So, well, thank you very much for watching. And I'm looking forward to your suggestions. Please, please do bring in suggestions if you have any. And, um, and uh, well, that's it, I think. Bye.